In the year 1888, a thick fog of terror descended upon London's Whitechapel district. This was an era of hardship and unease, where the east end of London was a labyrinth of narrow, winding lanes and dark alleyways. The air was heavy with the stench of poverty, and an undercurrent of fear pulsed through the cobblestone streets. The social climate was as grim as the living conditions, and the city was on edge. In the midst of this chaos, a sinister figure emerged, forever known as Jack the Ripper. The first victim fell on August 31st, the second just a week later. In the dead of the night, Marianne Nichols, known as Polly, was discovered lying in a pool of her own blood. The brutality of her wounds, a slashed throat and a viciously mutilated abdomen, sent a wave of shock through the Whitechapel neighborhood. The streets of London had barely recovered from the horror when just one week later, Annie Chapman met a similarly gruesome end. Her body, found in the backyard of a house on Hanbury Street, bore the same hallmark of savagery. Her throat cut, abdomen ripped open, the violence of her death surpassed that of Polly's. The shocking nature of these crimes, the sheer brutality, was something the city had never seen before. The murderer didn't just kill, he butchered, he mutilated, leaving behind a horrifying spectacle of gore and terror. These were not ordinary crimes, they were the work of a monster. Whitechapel was gripped with fear. The unknown murderer was still at large. Dread hung heavy in the air as the public response to the murders swelled into a tidal wave of terror. The streets once bustling with life, now echoed with whispers of the Ripper's name. The pressure on the police was immense. Every stone unturned, every clue scrutinized, but the phantom killer remained elusive. The city's heart pounded in its chest, as if mirroring the dread of its inhabitants. The city held its breath, anticipating the Ripper's next move. September 30th marked a horrifying escalation. Two victims in a single night. In the cold, dark streets of Whitechapel, Elizabeth Stride and Catherine Eddowes met their gruesome ends. Stride, discovered in Dutfield's yard, bore the chilling signature of the Ripper, a cleanly slit throat. But the night's horror was not yet over. Just an hour later, Catherine Eddowes was found in Mitre Square. The brutality of her injuries was a grim testament to the escalating violence of the perpetrator. Her throat was savagely cut, her abdomen horrifically mutilated. Eddowes's murder was the second part of what would become known infamously as the double event. The audaciousness of these back-to-back -back atrocities sent shockwaves through London. The Ripper was growing bolder, his crimes more fiendish. The public and the police were at their wits' end. The terror of Jack the Ripper had reached a fever pitch. The Ripper's final act of violence occurred on November 9th. The victim was Mary Jane Kelly, whose life was brutally cut short in a manner that sent shockwaves throughout Whitechapel. Unlike previous victims, Kelly's demise was marked by an unprecedented level of savagery a grim testament to the Ripper's escalating brutality. Yet, as abruptly as the wave of terror had begun, it ceased. After Kelly, the Ripper vanished as suddenly as he had appeared. The mystery of Jack the Ripper's identity has fascinated us for over a century. There's no shortage of theories. Some suggest that Jack was a high-ranking official, using his position to avoid detection. Others propose he was a surgeon, given the precision of the mutilations. Let's consider some of the main suspects. First, there's Montague John Druitt, a barrister and teacher whose own family believed him to be the murderer. His suicide shortly after the last murder fueled speculations. Then there's Aaron Kosminski, a Polish barber considered a strong suspect due to DNA evidence found on a shawl linked to one victim. Another suspect is Thomas Cutbush, a medical student with a history of violent behavior and mental instability. Each suspect presents a compelling case, yet there's insufficient evidence to definitively name any one of them as Jack the Ripper. Despite the countless theories, the true identity of Jack the Ripper remains an enigma. Jack the Ripper, the name itself is synonymous with unsolved crime. His reign of terror left an indelible mark on society, sparking a morbid fascination that transcends time. The Ripper's legacy permeates popular culture, from literature to film, fueling an ever-growing genre of true crime. Moreover, the elusive nature of his identity gave rise to the field of criminal profiling, shaping how law enforcement tackles unsolved cases today. Over a century later, the shadow of Jack the Ripper still looms over the world of crime and mystery.